So hello and um, welcome to this video. My name is Shelia Stevens. I'm the virtual coach from ShaliaStevens.com. And in today's video interview, I'm speaking with Rachel Henke, which almost sounds like a German name, but isn't actually a German person. <laughs> Hi, welcome, Rachel. Hi, Shalia. Thank you for inviting me. You're very welcome. Rachel and I are good buddies. We've been spending uh, the last six months pretty intensely together in one little house in Venice Beach, California, <laughs> on our journey to getting a better understanding of how life works and how human beings um, function within the context of that world that we live in. And um, Rachel is a person who brings um, a lot of insights in these areas to her, public her following um, with her fearless uh, concept and um, it's really good to have you today and I wanted to talk about productivity with you which I know is a subject matter that you really like. Yes, yes I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't talk about this in Venice Beach so much like I didn't you weren't talking about productivity all the time while we were there but I read a blog post because <laughs> I'm on your I'm on your newsletter list and I follow you on Facebook and I'm always really interested to what you're up to and what you're writing about and one of the blog articles that really struck me was your blog post on the subject of productivity and what, what, what is the true nature of productivity? And, and what you brought to the surface, I thought really well was like how we're kind of confused about what productivity is and how you get there, basically. So I thought I'd start off maybe um, by asking you about you and your business. Maybe you could introduce yourself, what you do, and who, who you speak to when you write those blog articles, and we'll just go from there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm Rachel and I live in a tiny little village in the UK in the Suffolk countryside. And what happened was about 10 years ago, I wanted to have a different kind of experience in my business. I wanted to be um, home more and I wanted to um, just have more freedom of, of time and schedule and so on. And that's when I discovered the lovely online world. And um, it's just been a, a real journey from there. I've written a couple of business books. And in the past couple of years, I, with Charlie, I discovered this wonderful understanding of how humans really tick. And one of the most fascinating areas for me in this understanding is the impact it has on how we show up, how we, how we operate in terms of business and work, how productive we can be. and around that wonderful topic of flow mm -hmm. is that something that i've been chasing for years yeah and i can really see now i was chasing it i thought it was it was somewhere i had to get to it was this kind of idea of a perfect spot that i get myself into and um so i find that this this can help anybody you know, I, I was laughing the other day, this can help anybody with a mind who has stuff to, to, to do. Uh, but I tend to write my, my articles and create my work for people who really get themselves quite stressed out in striving, overthinking, and trying to do more all the time. They, like myself, I tended to live a lot in the future. Yeah missing the present even though i'd read so many spiritual books about the importance of being in the present i couldn't see how to practically bring that to life so um it's for people who just are overthinking it and that they want to achieve so much in the world but that actually they get in their own way a lot yeah by using so many strategies that perhaps are not ideal for them because they're not suitable for what they, they want to do in the moment Yes. So it's, it's about having more freedom and, of course, productivity. We, we've got the sort of um, practical side of productivity, which is what I was very familiar with that I talked about in the article, doing all the courses, getting all the strategies, trying to be perfect at mm -hmm. doing all these things. And, oh, and if I can just get faster at this and better at this and... Um, you know, I'll do this in a way where I, I need to only work half the time and get double the results. And it, it just became slightly obsessive, to be honest with you. Yeah. I see people doing that a lot. Um, it's like we're striving for this nirvana of 
productivity where everything's perfect, there's no problems, all our systems <laughs> are fine tuned and working beautifully. And, and at, at the time, the idea was, I think for a lot of people in my circles and certainly for myself, was I'll work myself out of my business. Mm. Everything's running so beautifully, I'm so productive, hardly being there. <laughs> <laughs> Ma- massively productive zero present in the business <laughs> i think that's a goal that a lot of people have <laughs> it sounds totally ridiculous excuse my flying hair it's so hot here in the uk i've got a fan going so just you if you wonder why my hair keeps going like that <laughs> i know we were laughing before we started like it looks like she's on mtv or in some it's a model photo shooting it's just like blowing in the wind <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so this was what I was aiming for and to some degree um, I achieved that I had a really lovely part-time schedule um, I wrote a book all about this um, solution as you see there's a clock because I'm as I say I'm fascinated with beating the clock that's what I was up to yeah and um, with this understanding what came with it for me was a just a, a complete turnaround of how I saw productivity and I could see why what I'd been doing until then was helpful but not really giving me a better experience of or quality mm. of business so whilst many of us kind of high achievers and business people and entrepreneurs talk about making a difference and an impact, if, we're, if we've got so much of our focus on getting out of our business and not being there, there's, there seems to me to be a bit of a conflict. So what the understanding bring, brings to the table I think that's made the huge difference for me is being okay with where I am yeah. in the moment. Yeah. And if I've got, and you know, we still have a lovely schedule. I know you have a wonderful schedule and you do, you know, we're doing what we want to do. It's not that I'm saying, oh no, you should be in your business all the time. It's irrelevant in, to some degree. What, what I'm talking about is if we're not there mentally, we can't be productive. Mm-hmm. is we can't see what's in front of our nose yeah so does that does yeah that, that make sense it does make sense and, and i think i think that a lot of people can really resonate or especially people from who who follow me because you know i i, I think i always belong to that classic overachiever set right trying to put in um, one piece of work and get a maximum piece of uh, result out on the other end, right? Which is what productivity was for me. And um, when, I, when I hear you talking, you, like, well, and it also in your blog article, you, you were kind of saying like you were constantly chasing, trying to find these techniques, these methods, these strategies. Um, so you said you said those techniques and strategies were helpful, but the other way of understanding brought a whole new experience. So maybe we can dive down into that. So let's begin with maybe like how are these strategies helpful, and 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 how is helpful different than having a whole different experience? Maybe you can say a little bit more about that. Okay. Well, I think they're helpful if you need some kind of linear solution for something, mm-hmm. like. You know, you've got, you need some kind of software program that does something for you. It makes sense to, you know, research the best one that makes sense to you and to use it rather than, um, you know, writing your records with a feather on a... (laughs) (laughs) So you're going, so you're basically going all the way back and comparing the Middle Ages. (laughs) (laughs) It's not like I'm saying throw the baby out with the bathwater. There's lots of things that we can use, but I think what what's happened is many of us have taken it to such a degree that we lose sight of what it's for. Mm-hmm. So in trying to be, in a, <coughs> on a really practical level, in trying to be productive, if I spent hours and hours and hours every month 
trying to learn how to be productive. Yeah. I'm quite, and I've always got to stay up with the latest of how to be productive. And then, of course, things change and it never works out as you thought it would, right? No, it doesn't. That's something they never mention in the. <laughs> There's a spoiler! <laughs> You've got your perfect systems, you've got everything set up to go, and then suddenly, I don't know, your website crashes, something happens. Yeah. Um, so, so whilst we can use resources, you know, when we're not kind of um, dying by them working because we're destroyed if something doesn't work, what's far more useful and productive and fun is knowing we have everything we need now in this moment mm. to show up to whatever is in front of us. So it could all be going beautifully. You could feel like, wow, I'm so in flow today. Everything's lovely and great. It's easy, right? Mm. And then there's other days. It's just not there. You're feeling, um, I don't know, tired. Perhaps you're not well. Um, the system isn't available, your stuff's not working right, nothing's going to plan and you get yourself into a right funk. Yeah. Now, there's no productivity system in the world that can help you with that. Yeah. Because it's about, it's about your presence in the moment. So what Charlie and I are pointing to when we talk about this understanding and how, product, how productivity is impacted by it is we're talking about when you understand more about how that works, how you as a person work, you can see that no matter how you feel, when you understand it's not fatal to feel, you know, a little bit, obviously I'm not talking about just severely ill, but, you know, in the moment, if you're just feeling like a little bit, you know, your mood's down, you've not got much energy, like you can still do stuff. Yeah. Or you can choose not to do stuff, but it only becomes a problem when we really think that we, we don't trust ourselves, we need something outside of us, some magic system that's going to turn everything into this perfect world. Yeah. So, so if we throw that out and we start to understand that, oh, I'm okay, I've got what I need, I'm here. I'm a, I'm a, like, I, you're like the best software on the planet. This is what I said. It's like the greatest productivity secret on the planet because you are it. It's like, you know, we are so advanced. We have everything built into our system to respond to what is going on now, not what we thought might go on, what we think might happen in the future. So we can be so, dare I say, effortlessly productive when our thinking is just settled yeah. and we're not overthinking, trying to, you know, um, second guess what's going to happen, beating ourselves up for what we didn't do yesterday, but we just let it all go yeah. and show up to what's happening now. So a good example of this is what we're doing now. Now, a couple of years ago, I, I wouldn't say by a couple of years ago, I probably wouldn't be massively over planning, but still it's expected, right? When you're going to do a talk or something that you'll have, you'll have your plan. Yeah. Um, and some people take this to such a degree that they can spend, I have clients who save days every week by understanding this now, because they used to, to spend so much time preparing for their work with clients, preparing for their talks, preparing for everything they're going to do. Yeah. By the time they show up to do it, they've got no juice left because they're just so prepared. Yeah. And there's nothing fresh. And that, what, have you ever noticed that when you are trying to follow some kind of formula or some kind of, you know, those slides, that I used to do all those slides for the PowerPoints, you're trying to follow it all, so much of your mental energy is focused on getting it right. Yeah. And we're almost robotic. Yeah. And there's, there's no space for, for seeing what people in front of you are, are hearing, what they need, 
what's coming through from your wisdom, which is what I talked about in the article, like your guidance, your intuition, whatever you want to call it, but your connection to what is going on now in the moment. So if I'd have spent a couple of hours, I don't know, however long preparing for this talk or this chat, interview, whatever, it would be very canned. Whereas now we're having a genuine, authentic conversation and I had no idea what I was going to say. I knew we were talking about productivity. I know my ideas about productivity as I've been seeing them. But every day more unfolds for me on this. Yeah. And so between us, we've probably saved hours already yeah. by not having to fret and prepare and think how we're going to do this perfect interview. Yeah. And we're just trusting what we have in us. Wow, who knew? Yeah, and it's, it's way more fun. <laughs> and yeah, we, we save tons of hours. And yeah, so that totally resonates with me because I, I think that I think that a lot of people are walking around really not settled down, really up in their thinking, not, not you know, they could be preparing for the next interview, it could be preparing what their business is going to look like in the next six months, like all this preparation that we do that holds us back from the actual productivity. Productivity is, is connected to doing things, right? And, and that's, that, that's what becomes possible when we show up in that presence. Um, and while you were talking, it made me think back to this really funny situation um, a couple years ago where I bought a, an online program from someone in the UK. It was called Focus. And <laughs> we spent six full weeks, you have to imagine, and meeting up, I think, once every, every couple of days, I think it was two times a week, we would meet up for these like online coaching. So like, we're going to learn how to become completely focused on money generating activities, <laughs> um, getting super active in our business, like kind of like that whole, you know, freedom model of what you were saying, like, how are we going to get the biggest bang for our, for our revenue? We're doing the least amount of work. And, um, <laughs> you know, we would get all these courses on all the things that we were supposed to be doing. Like one of the, one of the examples was um, like listing everything you do in any given week. And then sort of giving it labels like, this is a money generating activity. This is a non money generating activity. So there are levels of money generating. You're only supposed to be focused on the money generating things. And I, I mean, just alone that one exercise, and that was one of many different things that we got taught to do. Like I would like put it out there to myself and say, okay, this is what you've got to do. And I would constantly be evaluating myself, every little thing I was doing, is it money generating, is it not money generating? Or another, another one that was really funny is, should I be doing this or should somebody else be doing this, delegating or not delegating, you know? And it seemed, looking back, I mean, I could just laugh and fall out of my seat because I was, I was spending so much time, you know, not only trying to set up the system and, and work according to someone else's productivity rules, like, that might have been really helpful for her the way she maybe used that in her business, but it wasn't my inner wisdom telling me to do that. So I'm, I'm, I'm basically regurgitating and trying to repeat something, you know, and so not being settled down. Right. So just all up in my head around how am I doing in the world? Am I, am I doing well or not? And looking back, I can see how much mental emotional capacity I was clogging up by trying to follow all that stuff, keep it, keep it on top of my mind. Yeah. Because that's what those, those methods and techniques and strategies do. They tell you, you've got to have it on your mind all the time. You've got to be focused. That's why it's called focus. <laughs> Which is actually the exact opposite of settling down and letting all that stuff go. And like you said, just trusting in the mega computer that we're connected to, right? funny because I thought it worked that way too yeah I think it, it could if we were robots yeah but we have our own connection we have our own our own wisdom and our own wonderful ideas coming through or trying to come through so when like you say we're just constantly thinking about how we should be focused first of all we're making ourselves wrong because we're 
not doing what we think we should do or we, we're judging ourselves for not doing it as well as we think we should which you know we may as well just shoot ourselves in the foot and be done with it yes because <laughs> there's no there's no freedom of thought in that there's no it's, it's just hard to be inspired from that place when you're constantly judging yourself and thinking you're not doing it well enough it reminds me a little bit of when you try to go on a diet and you just keep thinking about i don't know about you but i and i used to be a weight loss coach in a former life and i remember the more we would talk about <coughs> what they should or shouldn't eat the more people think about what they would really like to eat themselves <laughs> 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 so wrong about what they're eating and then it just becomes this big jumbled chaotic kind of mess in their head about what they're doing what they why they're not good enough and it always it often goes back to this why they're not good enough because because that's that's something that is a kind of a human thing that we all tend to fall into sometimes in different areas yeah so first of all in that example and trust me i've been through thousands it must be thousands of programs by now of all different types to you know get somewhere um in that program, it's first of all it's taking up hours of your time on a very practical level. Um, and second of all, it's just taking you away from being open to your own your own way of doing it. And I'm not saying that there aren't great strategies and there aren't things that can help us. Like, you know, there's things that I've taken on board that I really like to do with productivity. Um, but I do now without thinking about them. But that, I think, is the key. Yeah. If something's right for you, you start to do it without thinking about it. Whereas if it's an artificial force thing that you have to do, and I was, I was writing um, a chapter of my new book yesterday, and I was talking about this, funny how that works, productivity in, um, in living fearlessly. And I was, I was saying that, you know, Sometimes we, sometimes there's things I have to do that I don't want to do. And I sometimes I choose not to do them at that moment because I can feel that I'm just not going to do them well and it would be better if I go and have dinner and mm. take a few hours off. Yeah. Or there might be a deadline. And I prefer to honour my deadline and so I do it even if I'm not in the mood. But... It's hard to sustain that kind of pushing willpower thing, which is what most of those programs run on. Mm -hmm. An idea of you being the perfect prototype of, you know, Charlie or Rachel. When you get to this place, you're operating like this robot and everything's, you know, systematic. Um, and that's so alluring to me because I love systems like you. Yeah, I do too. I've really been caught up in that in the past. Um, so, so there's that whole element of using willpower. <clears throat> it doesn't really, is, you know, people have a natural motivation to do what they want to do. So when we're making ourselves do what we don't want to do, it never lasts for long. Yeah. Which is why motivating people is such hard work. Yeah. 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 And, come, and what comes to me when you're, when you're saying that is like, and that's where, that's where the feeling of a bad experience comes into play. You know, when, when we're pushing ourselves and we're, we're, we're driving everything on willpower and, and the whole time, you know, just trying to function that role. I always call, I used to call that robot modus, right? And um, that's, that's where our experience of our business, for example, starts to just deteriorate. We start to feel always, you know, that, that stressy feeling because we think we have to be, um, a certain amount of productive the whole time, a certain amount of focus the whole time, right? That's that's a certain expectation that we have of ourselves. We're behind that expectation where we create that gap and then feel the feeling of the gap that we're thinking, right? Yeah. And another thing that, that comes to me what, what you were talking was, let's, let me see if I can try to put it into, into words, because you talked about like giving yourself space and, um, I, I don't know. Did you did you listen to the videos that um, Michael and George Pransky did on the Productivity Weekend and how they talked about uh, 
yeah, about like the quantum-ness of, of space, like... I'm fascinated with productivity, try and keep me out of that, right? <laughs> try and keep me out, you were like all over that, you probably watched it three times. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think for me, what comes up, and I'm interested to, see, interested to hear what you think about it is, so I, I just had the picture of like a, a busy mompreneur in my mind's eye, because so many of my clients have children um, that are only in, in care for a certain amount of time, you know, they've got their family going on, so they have a certain amount of time every day they can work, and but not just people with children. I don't have children, I still have sort of a, a time frame that I show up for my business, and the kind of idea that, when it's my business time, I've got to I've got to fill up that time a hundred percent with productive activity, um, or um, other otherwise I've wasted the time that's there. And it occurs to me that that way of thinking is doing a sort of a misunderstand a misunderstanding of a calculation that's not correct. Which is, well, that would mean if I, I put in this amount of time and effort, I'm always getting the same amount out of it. When in fact that's not true. Sometimes I can work extremely hard and, and feel productive, but the results that I'm generating in the world are really small. And other times I'm barely doing anything, and I get this just massive good idea or insight or something happens from just you know coincidence, and it, it catapults me forward in a massive way. Yeah. So that that relation time and you know and and result aren't, aren't quite they think there's a misunderstanding there and so let's talk about that and let's talk about where the idea of space comes into that and and this inner wisdom that you were talking about yeah yeah this it really is endlessly fascinating to me this this whole topic and there's so much truth in that that we want to believe we want the certainty that I'll put in X number of hours and I'll get X money or results. Yeah. And the only way I've seen to do that is to have a job. <laughs> <laughs> you are so on today, Rachel. That is so true. I never thought about it like that. <laughs> Um, just to help people be more productive so they actually see what's going on. Um, so, I mean, even that's not a guarantee, obviously, but you've got a certain agreement, that's what you get. Um, so it seems to me like we're trying to operate our entrepreneurial businesses in an old paradigm of, you know, the Industrial Revolution, where they wanted to um, indoctrinate people to turn up to work in the factories. Yeah. And um, I think I heard this from Michael Miller originally, if I'm not mistaken, something about this, and I looked into it quite a bit because it's so interesting. Um, and, you know, people before that time, they, they didn't have a very um, strict schedule. They kind of worked to the seasons, they worked in the flow, and then the Industrial Revolution came and they wanted the factories full and they wanted people coming on a certain, you know, very long hours, certain times. Um, so they started to um, preach in, in, the, in the church and, and, you know, say to people that hard work gets you to heaven. Mm -hmm. So we're still running in that, in that, um, that kind of model. And it's, it's not helpful in a job because time doesn't get you the results for the employer anyway. It may get you your paycheck. But we all know, when we really think about it in a common sense way, that we can sit at our desk for seven, eight hours and yeah. you know, go through the motions and not get any results. Um, so, so this whole idea that linear time gets you anything is a complete misunderstanding. Yeah. So, and, and in entrepreneurial land, you know, as big a misunderstanding as there can be, because that's not where results come from. Yeah. Yeah. It's really funny. It's really funny when you think about it. Yeah. Yeah. So what about this space? So, so if, 
if there is no if there is no linear or causal effect like sometimes i give it all and nothing comes of it sometimes i do very little and i get everything sometimes it's one to one so if it's if it's varying all over the place where does this where does the settling down in the space come into to the picture like why why is that helpful in a world where that linear causality it doesn't exist actually yeah think about that well you know, I think if we've got a business where we're, um, we're not really part of it, some kind of, I don't know, we, we own a garage or something and um, <coughs> we don't need to actually be in it and, and do anything, um, it, it's limited. But when we are in our business and, um, you know, like today, again, with this, with this example, if I showed up today and my mind was somewhere else, you would feel that. Yeah. And that, that has a, you know, the impact we have in everything, in our life, with our, with our clients, in, in business, really is about our presence. Mm. And our presence can only be felt in the moment. We, so, so when we're settled down in what you're calling the space, we're, we're like, in, in actually, to just track back to what you said about the mumpers and the busy people with the hours, oh, I'm a mumper now, I need to fit all this in. I can totally relate to that because when I started my business, my kids were four and six. So this is why I got on this track of being productive. <laughs> so I can really, really relate to this. Um, and I had <coughs> all these things to do. And you know, a lot of times I did them. But here we're talking about results, impact, and what's always seemed really important to me is our experience of our business. Like, we don't start a business just to have money and just to have a business. And if we do, we won't probably enjoy it very much and we won't be, it won't be sustainable. So it's, it's always been really important to me to do something I love. And um, so in that, in that context, it's like, if you give yourself some space of, on the practical level, time, because um, time's all we've got in this, you know, form to kind of measure, yeah. measure what's going on. So say you've got half an hour. Now, today, these days, with this understanding that I have, I'd rather do, have less on my to-do to list and more time, more quiet time to sit in the garden for half an hour and let my thoughts settle a bit and see what I see what comes up for me about what I'm going to do next. Yeah. Rather than lock myself in a room, go through um, someone else's ideas of what a good business looks like and um, fill up, you know, this is what I used to do, fill up every minute, so like, say I'd pick up the kids at 3.20, I'd be like, oh my God, it's 3.17. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm so busy. Yeah. Um, it's not much of a life, to be honest. So there'll be days like that, you know? We're on, we're doing things, there's a lot of projects. But what I'm trying to point to here is they're not a, this is, it's not a prescription for no, don't work till three minutes before you pick up your kids. It's not a prescri <coughs> prescription for no, don't do any courses. It's just, it's just pointing people to an idea, to the truth of knowing that when, you're in, when your mind is more settled and you're not constantly seeking outside of you, other people's solutions, other people's ideas, other people's time management strategies, you are amazingly resourceful, yeah. all on your own. Yeah. Um, and for some reason in business, we lose that. We think, oh, I don't have any common sense. I don't have any intuition. I don't have any um, confidence. And of course, in thinking that and, and looking at what everybody else is doing, we take away our most important set that we bring to our business, which is us and our presence. I really like that, Rachel, and I, and I think that 
That's really pointing in the right direction. I can, I can feel that deep in my bones. And I think that that's um, a different possibility of having a different experience in our business. That seems really appealing to me. And I know that it's appealing to you as well. Yeah. And yeah. So like presence, if, if, it seems to me like the more attractive P to go for then, than productivity. <laughs> because it seems so powerful as I'm in another P um, as far as creating a new experience in my business, showing up in a, in a more powerful and connected way. And let's see what happens from there because the other thing is going to be up and down the whole time anyway, and there's nothing we can do about it. Yeah. So we might yeah. as well focus on the thing that matters, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really, I think the bottom line, the, the point I made in that article was letting go enough to trust ourselves to be able to handle what shows up today we don't need to be trying to figure out in advance and don't need to get it perfect but showing up is amazingly powerful all on its own yeah that's beautiful i love that so i think we'll put a dot at the end of the sentence and and, and leave it with that thought and my question to you, Rachel, is where can we find out more about you? Like, where can we read more of these great articles and hear more from you? Yeah, thank you. Um, well, at my uh, website, rachelhenker.com, so it's R-A-C-H-E-L-H-E-N-K-E.com. That's where my blog is. Um, and there's also a free fearless class, which, which talks about um, this understanding and about how stress and overwhelm and um, feelings of kind of not being worthy which tend to really get in the way of your productivity um, can be dissolved when you see more about how you know what's really going on so that's at um, rachelhenker.com forward slash fearless that's the fearless class and of course I'm on Facebook and um, Instagram and all over the place so feel free to reach out to me and I'd love to hear from you well, thank you so much, Rachel. It was a really beautiful conversation. And I look forward to sharing it with, um, with other people. I think, I think they're going to get a lot out of it. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.